What's up my reefing fam, March here. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Fragbox TV. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about keeping one of the most beautiful corals out there. It's Ghanipora. Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do another one of our kind of coral care videos. And this one is long overdue. Um, a lot of people have asked us to do them. Somebody actually called us last week from New York and said, uh, hey man, can you please do a video on how to keep Ghanipora? That's the Latin name or flower pot. Um, this video is going to encompass both Ghanipora and Alveopora. So just a little bit of a disclaimer there. This one is actually a Alveopora. How do you tell the difference? the tentacles. So Alveopora have 12 tentacles like this one here, same with this one over here, and Ghanipora have 24. So you can kind of just count out on, on the body which one has 12, which one has 24. Over time it becomes easier to kind of just, you, you notice with, the, uh, with time and experience which one is which. But the care requirements are very similar. So just for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna keep saying, uh, I think I'm just gonna use the word flower pot and that'll be sort of an all encompassing term for all of them. I was waiting to have a decent amount of them here in the store in order to do the video. We usually have these green ones. And I'm gonna go out there and say it, I find them fairly easy to keep. I know some customers tell us they are very tricky. Some call them impossible. I can tell you that these ones here, these varieties I'm about to show you, are all farmed locally here in Canada. They are maricultured corals that are kept and grown in saltwater aquariums. They are not from the ocean. Well, obviously, originally the strains are from the ocean, the original colony, but we have somebody here locally that actually grows them out. So this one here, this kind of ruby red uh, variety. This kind of peaches, I think we call this one peaches and cream. It's almost like a tan color with a, a blue mouth. These ones are incredible. These are my favorite out of all the ones we have in stock right now. And I can even show you a couple other cool varieties over here. This one is really, really something else. The color on it, it's just like, it's very vibrant. It's screaming. Here's another one all grown locally. Every single one I showed you here, they are not as hard. I think they get some, uh, kind of a bad rap. I can't grow every single coral out there. This is one that we are actually able to grow here in-house as well. And I've kept for many, many years with um, lots of success. They come in a lot of different colors. I think I have some blue ones right now I can show you as well. Sorry for the camera work. There's some nice dragon sulfavia, not to get sidetracked but some blue and purple varieties. They come in crazy, crazy color varieties. There's reds, there's rainbows, there's greens, there's blues, purples, there's different polyps and bodies and they're, they're really beautiful. And I believe there's 20 different species, at least if we're talking about Ghanipora, I'm not sure of the Alveopora, but there's a lot of them out there. So it's really tricky to know which species you're dealing with exactly. So I think a lot of times they just get grouped into this common name of flower pot. The long tentacle varieties are probably the most common or at least the most popular. People like how they they wave, they almost resemble a torch. They had tons of movement to the tank. And then the other variety is the encrusting variety. So they're like way, way shorter and they stay closer to the rock and they encrust more than they, they like these ones grow more like in a, a dome sort of shape, like in a large ball. And then they extend their tentacles from that base. I don't know where I got this idea from, but I used to think they were non-photosynthetic and I thought that they had to be, absolutely had to be, had to be fed. I don't know where I got that idea was from, but um, I was obviously wrong. Dylan here in the store showed me some research online that they are not um, what I thought they were. So they are photosynthetic. They will in fact take in light and then transform that into a food source. So full disclaimer here, the first coral Probably the first coral I ever bought was a flower pot coral. This is going back 15, 16 years, and I bought it with absolutely no research. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Actually, I'm gonna do another video on what it was like reefing back in my days. I was, um, uh, interesting adjectives are coming to mind to describe the way I was reefing. Wasn't very good, wasn't very responsible. Uh, it didn't last very long. Um, yeah, anyways, that's, that's gonna be a whole nother video. So placement is very important for these. You want to get them in the right spot. I find they do better under lower to medium lighting. And well, actually the ones that I just showed you, they came out of a tank that were grown under T5 mixed with Reef Bright, which is a very 
powerful high output light so they can get used to more lighting over time but I'm going to recommend you keep them under low to medium light for best results. Second really important thing is water movement. So I think people like them in general because of their movement. They almost look like, you know, like a euphilia, like these are very popular hammers and torch corals. People really like corals that move. So there's really no, you know, when you really look at them though, there's really no other coral like them. They're quite unique. And I used to think that they liked low flow. And then I changed my mind a couple years ago and I thought they liked really high flow. I'm going back, I'm going to say now with certainty from experimenting with pieces under high and low flow over time, they like random to low flow, maybe medium flow. This here in this tank, I'm going to say is just a little bit more than I would like to see. I would like to see maybe a touch less flow. They'll open up a bit more. So I'm going to say low 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 medium random flow but we have our Nero here in the sink and the reefer 250 it's set to random so this could be just a period of time where the flow is a little bit more so just about this but they're going to open up and they're going to extend and look a lot better with kind of gentle waving motion so that's going to help keep them clean you don't want a lot of flow or you don't want it too erratic it has to be calm nice relaxing these are kind of like stoner corals man they just want to chill and wave in the flow and that's what's going to make them uh, really happy you're going to get the best results with that sort of flow so if you're having trouble keeping this sort of coral placement definitely could be one of the issues try them lower in the tank lower light lower flow let them relax so like i said at the beginning of the video i used to think that feeding was a hundred percent necessary that's uh not absolutely true they are photosynthetic as we do know now but from experience i can tell you they will absolutely do better with feeding i think you should feed them we feed ours here in the store if you've had trouble keeping them um, go ahead and try feeding them reefroids is my favorite all around coral food this may not be available where you live it's a powdered um, engineered coral food just about Everything eats it and reacts to it. It's a great all around um, food that we use here in the store. I recommend it to everyone. I realize you may not be in Canada and this may not be available to you. So try to find something like this, like a powdered sort of coral food. We also feed live Fido here to our tank. So that's from Reef Nutrition. And I've noticed major improvements in the corals in general with the feeding of live Fido. I'm a big, I'm a big believer in it. It's a great food source. So these guys, they need small food particles. It's not like LPS corals like um, Duncan's or Hammers or Open Brains where you can feed them those nice, meaty, high protein pellets. These are going to want the smallest, smallest of powder foods. So if you're looking for one, um, look for something really, really fine like that. What we do is mix it with salt water and then feed the entire tank. We do broadcast feeding. It's kind of tricky to feed these guys directly because as soon as you touch them, they retract. They don't have a crazy exaggerated feeding response. So if you can imagine I was spraying him with some food, you can, but they pull back into their skeleton quite fast. So I'm not 100% sure if that sort of feeding, like uh, direct feeding, is the, is the most appropriate way to feed these. We also feed in the store here amino acids. So we're using specifically Red Seas Reef Energy. Um, I'm not trying to sell you this stuff. If you use it, that's great. You already know how awesome it is. There are lots and lots of different breads of amino acids on the market. This I just like the Red Sea stuff in general. So this is the one we've gone ahead and chosen. We've been using it since it came out. This is their new and improved formula. We're using a lot of the Red Sea products in general. I'm not going to talk about it much more in this video, but we do use their salt here on our entire, entire store. And we all are as well using the Red Sea Reef Energy Amino Acids. I see a great improvement in color growth, overall health of corals. I think it's important to feed aminos, especially for Ganipora. That's almost another video in its entire entirety. So between those two, I think it's I think feeding is important. Not 100, 100% necessary to keep them alive, but if you want them to thrive, look their best, grow, and send out their tentacles like this, I highly recommend feeding your tank. But you don't want to sacrifice water quality just to try and keep a Ganipora. So obviously check your nitrates, check your phosphates and do anything slow anytime you're going to start introducing a new food. So I find that they do well under normal conditions. We have them here in our normal, our normal, in our, um, in our full, like, uh, this is our frag tank setup that runs the entire length of the store. It's a large sort of 1500 gallon system with thousands and thousands of corals. 
The nitrates and phosphates are pretty low in the system. So they're close to maybe one or two on the nitrates and phosphates around 0 0.04 is where we, we typically keep them. But I'm gonna tell you, but, 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 the nicest Ghani tank I've ever seen, not seen, the nicest Ghani tank that we've had here in the store was actually a Fluval Evo, very similar to, not very similar. It was this uh, Fluval Evo before Tia took it over and the nitrates were through the roof and the Ghanis looked amazing. The polyp extension was incredible. I'm not saying increase your nitrates to try and keep flower pots or alveopores or anything like that, but this is long before we had the channel. I should have recorded it. I might be able to find a photo and throw it up on this video. The Ghanis, I've never seen polyp extension. The nitrates were through the roof. I'm talking 50 to 100. Phosphates were very high. It was a very nutrient rich aquarium and the, um, the flower pots definitely uh, appreciated it. At least they did in that tank. But they're very adaptable. So this tank we keep very clean. As you can see, the Ghanis look good polyps are out. I'm not going to ever try to adjust uh, nitrate and phosphate levels to try and keep uh, Ghani porous. So I've seen them do under a variety of conditions. I think flow is going to be the key um, if you're having trouble keeping these. Oh my god, sorry. I said it the other day, I think, but that is one of the cutest little pin cushions I've ever seen. In terms of the other values, in this aquarium we keep our calcium at 450, our alkalinity around 8, and magnesium, I keep it elevated, closer to about 15, almost 1600. So I find LPS in general do better with higher magnesium. I know the ocean's around 1300, 1350, given uh, different ocean, different levels. This obviously is not the ocean. And in my experience, higher magnesium, the LPS just look better, look puffier. You're not gonna harm anything by keeping it at 1500. I've done that for as long as I can remember in every single system. And I can tell you, I've shared that uh, experience with hundreds of customers that also keep it at that elevated level. So I don't know if you're watching this video because you're just general, generally interested in corals. Maybe you're having trouble with Ghani or you're looking to get into it. If you're having trouble, look at your magnesium levels, get a good quality test kit. I personally like the ones from Aquaforest from Poland. These ones are really good. That's what we use to test our magnesium here in the store and maybe consider bringing it up. But other than that, Mm, hit us up if you got any questions if you're having trouble with ganipora corals in general this is what we do we love 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 talking about this stuff i think we're going to wrap this one up if you like the content hit the subscribe button we do lots of videos like this trying to share our knowledge and experiences even though they're all antidotal but like how to keep corals because we want you guys to be able to keep them and have them happy because uh yeah it'll be a better hobby hobby i think for everyone if we're all able to keep them happier and thanks again to everybody you know you've seen the videos we did about the um sort of the crash that we had on this tank people have just brought in like somebody brought this the other day that's it's really nice you know I wasn't expecting anything for free. Some of the do donations that have come back in to help us get up and running. Really, really appreciate that, guys. Thumbs up to you guys. Um, can't say thank you enough. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Fragbox TV.